representatives of members of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, uh, your excellencies, heads and representatives of the diplomatic missions accredited to the Republic of Zimbabwe, members of the SADC Electoral Ad Advisory uh, Council, uh, SADC election observers, uh, welcome back, um, leaders and representatives of political parties, representatives of local and international uh, election observe, uh, observation missions, religious leaders, and members of the civil society. Uh, members of the media, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. My name is Annette Mtambanengwe from the SADC Secretariat, and together with my colleague, Mr. Mafiri, we'll be directing the proceedings uh, for this event this morning. It is my honor uh, to welcome you all to this important event as we gathered here to release, for the release of the SADC preliminary statement to the harmonized elections of the Republic of Zimbabwe by His Excellency Dr. Nevers Mumba, head of the SADC election observation mission to Zimbabwe. At the same event, we will be presented with the election pre preliminary statements from the African uh, Union Comesa Head of Mission, His Excellency Mr. Goodluck Jonathan, and former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and also uh, we'll be getting the preliminary statement of the Electoral Commission's Forum of SADC by Mr. Mpasa Mokochane, who is the chairperson of the Independent Electoral Commission of Lesotho and head of the Electoral Commission's Forum of SADC. After the statement, we will then have a Q&A, which will be facilitated by my colleague, Mr. Mafiri. Your Excellencies, a distinguished uh, guests, without any further ado, I would like now to call upon His Excellency Dr. Nevers Mumba, former President of the Republic of, former Vice President of the Republic of Zambia and head of the SADC Electoral Observation Mission to the Republic of Zimbabwe's harmonized elections, uh, to come and deliver his statement. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Your Excellency, the former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mr. Goodluck Jonathan, distinguished heads of election observers mission to the Republic of Zimbabwe, distinguished members of the SADC organ, Troika, director of the SADC organ on politics, defense, and security cooperation, representatives and members of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, your excellencies, heads and representatives of the diplomatic missions accredited to the Republic of Zimbabwe, members of the SADC Electoral Advisory Council, SADC election observers, leaders and representatives of the various political parties, representatives of local and international election observation missions, religious leaders and members of the civil society, members of the media, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Southern African Development Community, SADC, it is my distinct honor to welcome you all to this important event where I will present the SADC Electoral Observation Mission, SIOM's preliminary statement on the conduct of the 2023 harmonized elections in the Republic of Zimbabwe. The elections were observed in line with the revised SADC principles and guidelines governing democratic elections 2021 and the relevant laws of the Republic of Zimbabwe. I was appointed as the head of the SADC Electoral Observation Mission to the Republic of Zimbabwe by His Excellency Hakainde Ichilema, President of the Republic of Zambia, in his capacity as the chairperson of SADC Organ on Politics, Defense, and Security Cooperation. I maintained close collaboration with members of the Organ Troika, currently comprised of the Republics of Zambia, 
and Namibia and the United Republic of Tanzania regarding the harmonized elections in Zimbabwe. The CIOM also benefited from the pre-election goodwill assessment mission and report of and advice from the Sadiq Electoral Advisory Council known as SIEC. The Sadiq Electoral Observation Mission comprised of 68 observers, 50 were deployed to the 10 provinces of Zimbabwe and the rest were based at the CIOM headquarters here at the Rainbow Tower Hotel. Our observers were deployed to Harare, Bulawayo, Machungo, Matebeleland North, Matebeleland South, Midlands, Manikaland, Mashonaland East, Mashonaland Central, and Mashonaland West. During the pre-election phase, the mission consulted key stakeholders, such as the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, ZEC, key government agencies, leaders of political parties, representatives of faith-based organizations, media civil society organizations, and the heads of international election observation missions. The preliminary statement covers the mission's observations of the pre-election period and voting day activities. The mission's final report will cover in more detail, the observations of the pre-election and the post-election phases and is aimed at supporting and strengthening the democratic electoral processes in the Republic of Zimbabwe as a SADC member state. Now, here is the summary of our findings. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I now wish to share the summary of the mission's key findings. A, political and security environment. After consulting widely with stakeholders, the consensus was that the country was generally calm and peaceful. Constitutional and legal framework for the elections. The mission noted that the 23rd of August 2023 harmonized elections in Zimbabwe were regulated by the Constitution of the Republic of Zimbabwe and the Electoral Act of 2013. According to Section 158, Section 1, Subsection A of the Constitution of Zimbabwe of 2013, general elections should take place more than 30 days before the expiry of the five-year period specified in Section 143 of the Constitution. The mission noted that this section applies to the duration and dissolution of Parliament and stipulates that Parliament is elected for a five-year period which commences from the date the President-elect is sworn in and assumes office. The mission further noted that Section 144 or the Constitution requires the President, by proclamation call, to set a date for a general election after consultation with the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. Pursuant to this provision, His Excellency Emerson Dambuzo Mnangagwa, on 31st May 2023, issued a proclamation fixing the 23rd of August 2023 as the date for the presidential, parliamentary, and local government elections referred to as the harmonized elections. The mission was informed that a further proclamation was issued rendering 24th August 2023 as a polling day because of the delays experienced at certain polling stations. Furthermore, President Nangagwa also proclaimed 2nd October 2023 for the run of election to the office of president if such a poll becomes necessary. The mission noted that this proclamation was in line with the paragraph 4, 1 to 3, SADC principles and guidelines governing the democratic elections, which requires that the date or period of elections is prescribed by law. C, election management. The mission noted 
that the elections in Zimbabwe are managed by the ZEC, which is one of the five chapter 12 of the Constitution Commissions, that is, independent commissions whose purpose is to support democracy in Zimbabwe. In terms of Section 235 of the Constitution, the commissions must act in accordance with the Constitution, and they must exercise their functions without fear, favor, or prejudice. D, the limitation of constituencies. The mission was informed that the delimitation exercise well, that was conducted in 2022 by the ZEC was marred with controversy. In one way or another, concerned stakeholders claimed that the report that ZEC submitted failed to observe the constitutional requirements for such an exercise, and that there were also divisions among seven commissioners of the ZEC regarding the veracity of this report. The main allegations made against the report was that it constituted gerrymandering and that it failed to observe the correct methodology for calculating the 20% various constitutional rule with respect to minimum and maximum sizes of the 210 electoral constituencies. The courts dismissed legal challenges that were brought against the delimitation report of 2022. The mission, however, noted that there still remain questions regarding the delimitation exercise for the following reasons. Number one, in its delimitation report of 2022, the ZEC rightly states that the Constitution recognizes the in, impracticality of having equal number of voters in each constituency by allowing the Commission to depart from this requirement with a stipulated margin. In this case, the Constitution in Section 161, Subsection 6, stipulates that no constituency may have more than 20% more or fewer registered voters than other constituencies. The, the Constitution in Section 161, Subsection 6, A to F, also lists factors that need to be considered when delimiting since they are important during the exercise. However, the ZEC goes on to also state that based on the provision of section 161, subsection 6, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission then calculated the 20% deviation from the national average voter registration expected in each constituency, which was 27,640. This yielded a deviation of 5,528 voters. Since the average number of registered voters was regarded as a stable benchmark against which delimitation of constituencies was considered and conducted, the deviation figure was added to the national average to determine the maximum number of registered voters that a constituency delimitated would contain, for example, now at 33,168. Two, the mission noted that the use of the average number of voters per constituency is inconsistent with the provision of section 161 subsection 6 of the new constitution that was adopted in 2013. The word average appears in section 61A subsection 6 of the old constitution of Zimbabwe under which it was permissible to calculate the minimum and maximum permissible number of voters per constituency by using the national average as the baseline. The word average does not exist in section 161 subsection 6 of the new constitution, which deals with the same subject matter. The difference between section 61A subsection 6 and section 161, subsection 6 of the old and the new constitutions, respectively, is far from being merely technical. Number three, in the new constitution, and in the context of section 161, subsection 6, the maximum deviation is 20% of the voters registered in the constituencies. 
The new constitution uses actual constituency by constituency registered voter population, not the national average number of constituency voter population. To calculate the permissible deviation from the requirement that constituencies must have an equal number of voters. Mathematically, the two methods produce very different results and affect the equality of the vote concerning the elections to parliament. On the other hand, since the country votes as a single constituency in the presidential election, the difference in the methods has no particular impact on the equality of the vote in that election. It was, therefore, not unexpected that ZEC would receive substantial criticism on this aspect of its latest delimitation report. E, let me deal with the voters' role. Some stakeholders decried the delay in releasing the voters' role in a searchable and analyzable format as prescribed by the Electoral Act. Some stakeholders expressed displeasure that the delay in releasing the voters' role resulted in mis missed opportunities for them to audit the voters' role and therefore give the public confidence about the veracity of the voters' role. According to the ZEC, there was, however, an opportunity that was provided for interested parties to inspect the voter role as pre provided by the Electoral Act. In this regard, the mission took note of Section 62 of the Constitution. This section provides that every Zimbabwean citizen has the right to access any information held by the state or by any institution or agency of government at every level in so far as the information is required in public interest. The mission also noted that in terms of Section 21, the Electoral Act, the Commission shall within a reasonable period of time provide any person who requests it, and it also pays prescribed fee with a copy of any voter's role including a consolidated role referred to in section 20, subsection 4A, either in printed or in electronic form, as the person may request. Access to the voters' role is also premised on the constitutional requirement that the ZEC must deliver fair elections. In the exercise of this function, the Constitution requires the ZEC to exercise this function. The Constitution requires the ZEC to ensure that those elections are conducted efficiently, freely, fair, transparently, and in accordance with the law. Following consultations with the ZEC, the mission was informed of the conflict created by the introduction of the Cyber and Data Protection Act, which enjoins all institutions and agencies to protect the privacy of information entrusted to them vis-a-vis -vis the provisions of Section 21 of the Electoral Act, where the voters' role, although containing the personal information of voters, i.e. names, date of birth, uh, open, um, ID numbers, address, sex, is a public document open to inspection by the public. Such conflict has resulted in there being litigation around the voters' role as aforementioned, where in one case an applicant does not want his information public, and yet in another the applicant seeks an order directing that the voters' role be availed. The mission acknowledged the concerns the ZEC raised above regarding difficulties related to releasing electronic versions of the voters' role. However, the mission also noted that the law gives the Commission discretion, discretion to impose reasonable conditions to prevent the voters' role from being used for commercial or other purposes and connected with, a, with an election. In particular, the mission noted that Section 21 of the Electoral Act provides the following. Where a voter's role is provided in electronic form in terms of subsection 3, 4, or 6, its form must, must, must be such as follows its contents to be searched and analyzed, provided that the role may be formatted so as to prevent its being altered or otherwise tempered with. 
the commission may impose reasonable conditions on the provisions of the law to prevent it from being used to co for commercial or other purposes and connected to an election. Apart from the above safeguard measure against the abuse of the voters' role, there is also room to note that a constitutional body, the ZEC, is obliged to give effect to the Constitution as to the supreme law. In this regard, the requirement for transparent and fair elections, instead of relying on legislation, the Cyber and Data Protection Act, that negates the specific requirement, in addition to the fees levied to access to the printed voters roll, the mission notes that the above scenario is restrictive regarding access to the voters roll by interested persons, including political parties. Freedom of Assembly, F. The mission noted the controversy emanating from the Maintenance of Peace and Order Act, MOPA, which sets out a process for notifying the Zimbabwe Republic Police of the intention to hold a, camp a campaign activity. In this respect, there were stakeholder concerns about the right to freedom of assembly for election campaign purposes, whereupon the CCC reported that their rallies were being subjected to unreasonable cancellation by the Zimbabwe Republic Police. We also noted reports that there was inconsistent application of the notice period for election campaign gatherings with certain political parties stating that the ZRP required a seven-day notice instead of a three-day notice that is applicable during election periods in accordance with Section 71B, Subsection 2 of the Maintenance of Peace and Order Act. G, freedom of expression. Uh, freedom of expression. The mission received concerns from several stakeholders that the recent amendment of the criminal law Codification and Reform Act, Chapter Number 9, Number 23 of 2004, which amendment is commonly referred to as the Patriot Act, has resulted in a severe restriction of the freedom of expression, which is guaranteed by Section 61, Subsection 1 of the Constitution. The Patriot Act creates the offense of willfully injuring the sovereignty and national interest of Zimbabwe. Stakeholders were particularly concerned that this offense is vague, too general, and it criminalizes any communication between two or more persons, whether happening in person, or virtually, or by combination of both, which invokes or is facilitated or convened by a foreign government or any of its agents, proxies, or entities. Of note was also the concern that even the consultations between these stakeholders and international observation missions like ourselves could fall afoul of this law. The mission noted that the Patriot Act is incom incompatible with the spirit of Section 61, Subsection 1 of the Constitution and Paragraph 1, 2, 1 and 2 of the Sadiq Principles and Guidelines Governing Democratic Elections, which requires member states to uphold, amongst others, the freedom of expression. H, nomination of candidates and nomination fees. The mission noted the unprecedented amount of litigation surrounding the elections, amongst others concerning the nomination process of candidates. In this respect, we further noted the protest and litigation of, of a Mr. Xavier Kasukuere, who believes that he was unfairly disqualified as a presidential candidate. However, the courts dismissed this particular complaint. The mission further noted stakeholder concerns that nomination fees for a person to stand for election have become too high and therefore restrictive to political participation. In June, the government, through the statutory instrument 144 of 2022, increased the presidential nomination from the fee of 1,000 to 20,000 US dollars. 
Nomination fees for a constituency election increased from 50 to 1,000 US dollars. These amounts were also cited as unduly restrictive to less well of members of the community, such as women who lack the means. In this context, we also take note of the significance of paragraphs 4, 1, and 7 of the SADC principles and guidelines, which requires member states to guarantee an environment of open contest with no undue exclusion and restrictions on anyone eligible and qualified to stand as a candidate in any election. I, participation of women as candidates. Stakeholders, the stakeholders that also included in political parties acknowledge the significance of Section 80 of the Con Constitution and the SADC Protocol on Gender and Development, which require that women be given equal opportunities as men in political, social, and economic activities. Despite the innovations that Zimbabwe has made, such as the provision of the 30% female quota in respect of councillors for local authorities, the mission noted that a, a lot more needs to be done to achieve gender parity in contested elected political positions. In this regard, our mission was advised that in 2023, fewer women actually succeeded in their party's primary elections, and effectively less women stood for the National Assembly while only one woman stood for the presidency. Amongst others, this could also be attributed to the high nomination fees. J, independence of the judiciary. In view of their significance in the event of legal challenges in the context of the electoral process, some stakeholders express the view that the government compromises the judiciary a key justification for this per perception was information received from these stakeholders that the judiciary recently received large financial and material incentives, which the stakeholders viewed as an attempt by the government to buy the loyalty and allegiance of the judiciary. K, alleged intimidation of voters. The mission was informed that the rural vote may be compromised by alleged intimidation attributed to a group called Forever Associate Zimbabwe FAS, which is said to be a quasi-security intelligence organization. The group was said to have been deployed towards and around 36,000 villages. The allegations were that people were intimidated to vote in a particular manner and were warned that it would be easy to determine who voted against certain parties. L, postal voting controversy. There was considerable concern from the opposition and other stakeholders that postal voting by the officers of the Zimbabwe Republic Police was compromised by the alleged coerced vote voting. There were allegations that police officers undertaking postal voting were coerced to vote in a particular way in the presence of their supervisors, thus compromising the secrecy of the vote. M, coverage of the elections by state-owned media. It was the contention of several stakeholders that the state-owned media houses remain biased against the opposition political parties and their candidates during the campaigns. While the mission noted some, that some improvement compared to the 2018 electoral processes was also noted that the content of the public broadcaster and the state-owned newspapers were in favor of one political party, contrary to the relevant provisions of the Constitution, the Electoral Act, and the revised SADC principles and guidelines governing democratic elections, which require state-owned media to be impartial. Now, let us put across our observations on election days 23rd to the 24th of August, uh, 2023. On the election days, the SADC election and electoral observation mission observed the voting process in 10 provinces of the Republic of Zimbabwe. 
The deployed observer teams covered 172 polling stations in their respective areas. The political contestants have continued to call for peace during this election period and after. The SEOM observed the following critical aspects at the 172 polling stations that we visited. A, the environment at the polling stations was relatively calm and peaceful. <clears throat> B, several voters expressed concern due to a lack of or late arrival of ballot papers and poor administration at some polling stations. However, voters remained patient to exercise their constitutional right to vote. C, professional and attentive police presence enhanced the overall peace and secure environment in all the polling stations observed. D, 64% of the voting stations observed open on time, 36% did not open on time for the 7 a.m. stipulated opening time. Some polling stations opened open more than 12 hours after the stipulated time. The reason provided by Zek for the unprecedented development was the unavailability of ballot papers, particularly for the local authority elections and also due to previous litigation. The challenge was, however, specific to Harare. The challenge was, however, only specific to Harare and Buluwayo provinces. Due to the delays, some voters left without casting their votes, while others remained in the lengthy queues throughout the day and night. By 6 a.m. on the 24th of August, 2023, some voters in these two province provinces had still not voted. Consequently, these delays also had a knock-on effect as they dissuaded voters from voting in the first place. Against this observation, we further note the following. Section 50, number one, section 52, subsection one of the Electoral Act provides that for any election, the ZEC should ensure that every constituency elections officer is provided with polling booths or voting compartments and ballot boxes and shall provide papers, including ballot papers. Two, before election day, ZEC had assured our mission and other stakeholders that all necessary voting materials, including ballot papers, were available and ready for use. This communication was made in the context of Section 52A, Subsection 2 of the Electoral Act, which requires ZEC to provide information on the number of ballot papers and publication of, of details regarding ballot papers. Based on these two considerations, the subsequent information from ZEC that they did not have adequate ballot papers has the unfortunate effect of creating doubts about the credibility of this process. E, the voters' role was unavailable at 1% of the polling stations observed and was therefore not displayed outside the polling stations for the convenience of the voters and verification by party candidate agents. F, during the voting period, and at 26% of the polling stations observed, not all voters who turned out to vote could vote. The reasons advanced for this included, number one, voters were identified, but their names were not found on the voters' roll. Two, it was not possible to establish the voters' identity. Three, voters were at the wrong polling station. And four, voters did not have a national identity card or passport or due to absence of an official witness confirming an elector's identity. G, 8% of the polling stations observed were not accessible to voters living with disabilities. At 50% of the polling stations, voters living with disabilities, the elderly, the pregnant women, were not given priority to vote. I, in 3% of polling stations observed, indelible ink was not checked on the voters before allowing them to cast their vote. J, at 97% of the polling stations observed, voting was free from usual irregularities. K, 
K. Voting proceeded in an orderly manner at 95% of the polling stations observed. L. Ballot boxes did not remain locked and or sealed at 2% of the polling boxes that were observed. Um, as a result of the excessive delays in the opening of polling stations in Harare and Bulawayo provinces, at least 36% of the voting stations observed did not close at the scheduled closing of 19 hours, while some had not even opened by that time. It was announced that voting would be extended to proceed into 24th August 2023 to compensate for the late opening. And then, in previous stakeholder consultations, a shadowy organization that I've already referred to as Forever Associated Zimbabwe was accused of conducting a countrywide exercise of electoral intimidation. Our observers confirmed the existence of this group as its officials or agents were easily identifiable at some polling stations as they were dressed in regalia, emblazoned with the first name and were accredited uh, electoral local observers. These and other unidentified persons who were not polling officials were also observed taking down the voters' names before they cast their votes. In some areas, voters were intimidated by the actions of these individuals. Or the mission observed the closing and the vote counting processes. A proper analysis of these two processes shall be provided in the final CIOM report. Recom number four, recommended improvements in the electoral process. At this juncture, allow me to recall that CIOM is continuing the process of electoral observation in the post-election phase. As such, the mission will not be rendering comprehensive recommendations and detailed uh, qualifications of the election at this stage. However, the mission has observed the following areas of the electoral process and system that relevant stakeholders may wish to consider improving. Number one, access to the voters' role. In order to improve perceptions amongst the public, political parties and candidates, ZEC is advised to strictly follow the provisions of the Constitution on transparency, access to information, and timeshiously avail the voters' role in accordance with the stipulations under the Electoral Act. Two, nomination fees. In order to enhance the openness and inclusivity of, uh, of the political process, ZEC is urged to engage with all stakeholders in the process of revising nomination fees for the candidates and attempt to benchmark the revised fees in the context of the SADC region and Zimbabwe's economic realities. Three, state-owned media coverage. The relevant media regulatory authorities are urged to ensure the implementation of measures that require impartiality in the coverage of political events by state-owned media. And four, voting materials. ZEC is urged to strengthen transparency in the procurement process and delivery of all voting materials, including ballot papers, and put in place a monitoring system that includes the participation and verification by electoral stakeholders. In addition, there is need for the Electoral Commission or Electoral Act to be revised to put in place clear frameworks and time frames within which these processes should be completed. Number five, participation of women. Effective and practical measures should now be put in place at the earliest sitting of the next parliament to enhance the equal participation of women as candidates in electoral processes. In conclusion, in conclusion, the mission observed that the pre-election and voting phases on 23rd to the 24th August 2023 harmonized elections were peaceful and calm. However, the, for reasons outlined above in this report, the mission noted that some aspects of the harmonized elections fell short 
of the requirements of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, the Electoral Act, and the SADC principles and guidelines governing democratic elections of 2021. The mission commends the people of Zimbabwe for maintaining a peaceful political environment during the pre-election period and on voting day itself. The mission will release its final report after the validation and proclamation of final results as provided for in the SADC principles and guidelines governing electro uh, democratic elections. The final report will be shared with, with the ZEC and all stakeholders. In terms of the SADC principles and guidelines governing democratic elections, our long-term obs observers will remain on the ground to continue with a post-election observation until the 1st of September 2023. The SEAC shall return at an appropriate time to undertake a post-election review to determine the extent to which the recommendations of SEOM have been implemented and the nature of the support, if any, that the member state holding elections may require from SADC region to implement these proposals. In the event of any electoral disputes, the mission appeals to all contestants to channel their concerns through established legal procedures and processes. The mission urges all political parties and the people of Zimbabwe and all the stakeholders to allow the ZEC to announce the final results as legally mandated. May God bless Zimbabwe. May God bless Sadiq. May God bless Africa. Merci beaucoup. Obrigado, Asante Sana, Tatenda. I thank you.